Look, elections have consequences, and you can elect people who deliver results for you and for this country, or you can elect people who take away your freedom and engage in performative stunts while doing so. I mean, you take a look at the election in Louisiana recently. A MAGA Republican governor, Jeff Landry, was recently elected, and today he invoked biblical figures as he signed into a law a new law requiring public school classrooms in the state to display the Ten Commandments. There was a young girl standing behind him as he was signing this bill into a law, and she literally passed out behind him. She fainted, and he didn't do anything while this little girl fainted. And I was just thinking, while uh, the MAGA Republicans are engaged in stunts like this, they don't follow any of the commandments at all. And so we did a video at the Midas Touch Network about Donald Trump's behavior. Um, and we did this in the past election cycle, but we re-released it. Let me share with you Donald Trump's deadly sins. Let's play this clip. Most importantly, I broke my Bible. Of the president setting up this photo op for himself. Tear gas was used to remove peaceful protesters. So the president could stage a photo He's holding up a Bible. I moved in her like a <laughs> and she was married. The, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Because you're a rich guy, and if you don't support me, you're going to be so goddamn poor, you're not going to believe why do I have to, you know, repent? Why do I have to ask for forgiveness if you're not making mistakes? A federal judge is ordering President Trump to pay $2 million to a series of nonprofit organizations. The president misused his own charitable foundation. Trump University was fraudulent. That settlement, $25 million. Is adultery no longer a big deal? in Indiana and in America. I, for one, believe that the Seventh Commandment, contained in the Ten Commandments, is still a big deal. Three women now pursuing legal action, one over a case of alleged harassment, and two others over alleged affairs. I don't like to have to ask for forgiveness, and I am good. I don't do a lot of things that are bad. His father was with Lee Harvey Oswald prior to Oswald's being, you know, shot. Take a moment to digest that. The sitting president is yeah. insinuating a journalist is responsible for murder. 5,000 cases a day. Show me the death chart. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? Well, the death chart, chart is much more important. They are dying. That's true. And you ha it is what it is. I wanted to always play it down. I still like playing it down. No religion, no anything. Hurt the Bible, hurt God. He's against God. As we point out in the video, you can just list them right there, right? I mean, you've got um, thou shall not use the Lord's name in vain, thou shall not covet, thou shall not steal, thou shall not commit adultery, bear false witness, kill, ignore the Sabbath, dishonor thy family, make yourself into an idol, have worship uh, or worship any other gods. I mean, Trump violates them all. Um, let me just show you uh, what went down when uh, Governor Jeff Landry of Louisiana uh, signed this into law requiring public school classrooms to display the Ten Commandments. Watch the girl behind him literally pass out and they do nothing while she faints. That should just tell you everything. Isn't that such a, it's unfortunate, I hope she's okay. But isn't that just so symbolic that on the one hand, this is what they're focused on while a young girl is literally passing out and needs urgent emergency attention. Here, play this clip. This bill mandates the display of the Ten Commandments in every classroom in public, elementary, secondary, and most education schools in the state of Louisiana. <laughs> By the way, you can compare that to former President Obama, right? When someone passed out in his speech, you saw how he acted. Here, play this clip. From the American people, the crushing burden of unaffordable health care to free families from 
the pervasive fear that one illness I got you. No, no, you're, you're okay. This happens when I talk too long. <laughs> and by the way, as the Patriot Takes uh, account pointed out, so I, I guess are the Republicans in Louisiana still rejecting summer food aid for children? Um, so there are a number of states that think it's too woke to provide summer food aid. More than a dozen Republican states have declined to join a federal program this year to give low-income families $40 per child monthly grocery benefit when schools close for the summer. And we go, why are they doing that? They want their people to feel bad. They want to hurt their people. They want their people to feel angry. And then what they want to do with the anger um, and by keeping people uneducated and where this actually is coming from, that they're blocking aid, that they're blocking programs to help the people, then they come along in their predatory way and say, this is all about the woke people and these are the people who are doing this to you. I mean, just take a look too. Donald Trump recently gave a speech at a church, not the fake black church where he gave a speech, or the black church with all white people in it wearing MAGA hats and shouting Donald Trump's name in a place of worship. How disrespectful can you be? But before that, Donald Trump gave a speech in another church in Arizona, and at that other church, Donald Trump led a chant where they were cursing and saying the word BS over and over again in a place of worship, just cursing in church as part of a political campaign. Just think about that all together. Here, play this clip. So they come up with this order. I, I won't say it because I don't like using the word bullshit in front of these beautiful children. So I won't say it. I will not say it. But this thing allows millions of people. <laughs> And of course, you remember that Donald Trump couldn't even name a Bible verse when he was asked about it in the 2016 election. Play this clip. Okay. You mentioned the Bible. You've been talking about how it's your favorite book. And you said, I think last night in Iowa, some people are surprised that you say that. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favorite Bible uh, verses are. Well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me, that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal. So I don't want to get into there's verses. No, there's I don't no want to get into it. There's no, no verse I, I, that means I a lot to you that you think about or cite. The, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Even to cite a verse that no, you like. No, I don't want to do that. You're I mean, an Old okay. Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. I think it's just an incredible, the whole Bible is an incredible, I joke. Uh, very much so. They always hold up the art of the deal. I say my second favorite book of all time. But uh, I just think the Bible is just something very special. Or when Donald Trump said two Corinthians at Liberty University, by the way, whose founder uh, had to, like, who left in shame after it was discovered all of these, like, uh, you, go, you can go and look at, at all the Falwell stuff and the sex stuff and the cover-up and the fraud and all of the things going on here play the clip and i i asked jerry and i asked some of the folks because i hear this is a major theme right here but two corinthians right two corinthians 317 that's the whole ball game and while all of that's going on you have the MAGA republicans in congress um replacing american flag pins with pins of ar-15s you have Donald Trump bragging that he's done nothing to save children from being shot in school. Play this clip. Perhaps worst of all, even as they turn America into a crime-ridden, gang-infested, terror-filled dumping ground, Joe Biden and his thugs will do everything in their power to confiscate your guns and annihilate your God-given right to self-defense. You have a right to self-defense. You've always had that right. And during, during my four years, nothing happened. And there was great pressure on me having to do with guns. We did nothing. We didn't yield. And once you yield a little bit, that's just the beginning. That's the avalanche. And then here's what President Biden had to say about that. Play this clip. 
Our predecessor told the NRA convention recently, he's proud that, quote, I did nothing on guns when I was president. And by doing nothing, he made the situation considerably worse. That's why every town, why this summit, why all of you here today are so damn important. We need you. We need you to overcome the unrelenting opposition of the gun lobby, gun manufacturers, so many politicians when they oppose common sense gun legislation. Yet Donald Trump posts these these images, these blasphemous images, the convicted felon adjudicated sexual assaulter posts photos of like constantly of like Jesus on his shoulder. Donald Trump makes this statement about like, well, if you're Jewish, you should be ashamed of yourself if you don't vote for me. Talk, how dare you play the clip? If, uh, if you're Jewish and you vote for him, I say shame on you. So to be And Donald Trump makes videos like that with each religion. He says the same thing. If you're Catholic, you should be ashamed of yourself if you don't vote for me. Here, play the clip. Under crooked Joe Biden, Christians and Americans of faith are being persecuted like nothing this nation has ever seen before. Catholics in particular are being targeted and evangelicals are surely on the watch list as well. Over the past three years, the Biden administration has sent SWAT teams to arrest pro-life activists. The FBI has been caught profiling devout Catholics as possible domestic terrorists and planning to send undercover spies into Catholic churches, just like in the old days of the Soviet Union. Catholics, you cannot vote for the Democrats. You cannot even think about voting for Biden. What they're doing to you is Shocking. As president, I will create a new federal task force on fighting anti-Christian bias. It will be led by a reformed Department of Justice, but it will involve many agencies and departments. Its purview will be to investigate all forms of illegal discrimination, harassment, and the persecution of Christians in America, as well as the use of taxpayer dollars to promote anti-Christian bigotry. Among other initiatives, the task force will review the past DOJ persecutions and prosecutions for evidence of anti-Christian prejudice, and it will also look at government agencies, universities, and major corporations that have adopted anti-Christian diversity, equity, and inclusion programs. He's just making up horrible, horrible stuff right there. And again, at the end of the day, just deliver for the people. There's a place, you know, whether you're religious or not religious, we should respect that. Uh, there's a separation of church and state, uh, and that just, that needs to be respected. I like that President Biden, while he is a religious man, he actually attends church, which by the way, if he did or didn't, really wouldn't change my view of him at all. <laughs> but he attends church, and he doesn't put it in our faces. He doesn't. He doesn't make, he doesn't, and you know, someone asked me, they said, well, why doesn't he do it? Wouldn't it help him in the election if he just went out and talked about it more? And I just said, that's just, that's not what politics should be about. And President Biden, for him, religious is, religion is his own private thing that he has with his family and he has deeply held views and he's not imposing them on others. It's that simple. Anyway, hit subscribe. Let's get to 3 million subscribers together. Thanks for watching. Enough! Send it to the big house, not the White House. Get the new exclusive tees, mugs, and stickers right now at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.